Jerusalem descending a city from the sky Abraham's dream and the answer to Well, the first act that I saw when I got to Kingstock was uh, Dissident Prophet, a Birmingham four-piece band, and I'm joined by husband and wife team Andy and Mel Jennings. How was it for you? I oh, enjoyed that, man. That was really good. It's a bit blistering, a bit us, uh, but no-one died. <laughs> <laughs> there was no-one sand dancing, so it was a bit disappointing on that mm. front, but it is just grass, I suppose. I saw a, a description of the band. You're an apocalyptic band. Is that right? Apocalyptic punk, apocalyptic rhubarb punk band. Some people call it a new wave band. Who knows? Actually, we're just trying to initiate a new term that amongst rhubarb punk. If you've not heard of it, you're not with it. A new genre. A new genre. A new genre, a new movement, new way of looking at life. <laughs> so, one foot in the grave, one foot in the custard. We we play rhubarb music. <laughs> How do you fit into the Christian music scene, if at all? <laughs> uh, if at all is a good point. I think we tend to do a lot of gigs, uh, pubs, and things like that. A lot of people like our music in those places. Don't particularly like if they hit, catch a whiff of the words, they might not like it. Uh, in places like this, a lot of people like the words, may not like the music. I think we're a bit like. A bit like Marmite. <laughs> People do either like us or, or not like us, and we're happy with that. We're happy with that. Well, that's good, going yeah. into pubs. I mean, so you do let some of the message seep through when you're playing there, I imagine, don't you? Yeah, we just carry on doing what we do, really, uh, singing and talking about things. I mean, we like to talk about and sing about the things that are going on in the world, you know. Everyone else is living in the same world, and we... And it, we, we don't, we're, not, we're not trying to be blind, you know, stick our heads in the sand, really. I guess some music's... We write passionately about things that are going, we think are wrong, things that are right, and, you know, the state of the world, from a biblical perspective as well. And that's not even that popular necessarily in churches, because not everyone wants to do that. They want more, to be entertained more. So we, we kind of have a message that's kind of, yeah, a bit chalky, a bit cheesy. Our slogan or whatever is music for ears that hear. So some people hear it, get the message. Some people hear it, don't get the message. A bit like a parable, I guess, of Jesus's. You just put it out there anyway, and sometimes the penny drops with people six months later and think, oh. I guess the kind of people who have picked up on it is the kind of the fringe Christian world, the truth and music. You've got a truth and movement that came after 9-11, but then you have the Christian truthers who will take it an extra step further and say that the things that are going on in the world... So a lot of people woke up in 9-11 to the state of the world and, oh, it looks like this, it was a bit of an inside job, maybe. There's a lot of false flags going on and, you know, the idea of a new world order and things like that. But what, what we, 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 we would probably say yes to that, but then just take it on a step forward and say, actually, right, it's written about that in the sacred um, uh, uh, prophetic scriptures, which were written thousands, a couple of thousand years ago, which is pretty amazing, and I, always, I find that an amazing thing. And is it more difficult to be uh, a Christian in this uh, current secular world? I think it's getting harder. I think uh, perhaps in the, in the West here it's been easy. We've had a bit of a honeymoon. I think if you lived in Syria, if you lived in China, if you live in any of those countries, you'd be persecuted, you'd probably lose your head, maybe even today. Over here, you'd be ridiculed, perhaps laughed at, perhaps sn sneered at, you know, uh, eyebrows, r eyes, r eyes rolled. That's the kind of persecution here. But it might change, be even get even worse with legislation through, you know, coming through, where, you know, just having a strong opinion, not even about Jesus, but having a strong opinion about anything, is seen as, like, slightly dangerous. The other day, David Cameron, he said, we want to clamp down on non-violent extremism. And I'd actually like to clump down on him because that's a very extreme thing to say. It's not violent, but it's extreme. We've been talking to uh, Andy and Mel Jennings. They're from uh, Dissident Prophet. They've got a new album out, and it's called The Red Moon Rising. Thank you so much for talking to us, uh, and yeah. I wish you well. No more songs of sorrow.
And do you think that uh, people will go home with a, uh, not only having had a good time, but a, a clearer sense of uh, the Christian faith and maybe their part within it? They certainly will have had their eyes open to some uh, different expressions of Christian faith. We knocked down any sort of preconceptions that people have of Christianity. If somebody came here not knowing we were a Christian festival, they'd potentially leave still not knowing it's a Christian festival. We're certainly not about force-feeding people some sort of religious message. Uh, we're just showing that Christians are creative and a relevant part of culture. So if you want to go along to the final day of the Kingstock Music Festival, it's on at Moggerhanger Park in Bedfordshire today. There are three stages, starting on the main stage, the Impact Stage at 10, Matt McCleary and his band, followed by Chaos Curb and Echo. On the Woodland Stage, from 9 o'clock this morning, DJ Mike Weston to wake up all the campers, followed by Keith Sadler, Ruth Ellen and John Kendall. And on the Garden Stage at 10 to 12, Joshua Francis followed by Christina Miles. Just go to Mogger Hanger Park then, it's on the Bedford to Sandy Road, the A603, go through the main entrance. You won't see any signs to the festival until you get to the uh, the driveway to uh, Mogger Hanger. Lovely atmosphere, very welcoming, and you should have a lovely day today. Get tickets on the day. This is a track called Jerusalem Descending. From Dissident Prophet. And their new album is out. It's called Red Moon Rising. Their website is www.dissidentprophet.com. My grateful thanks to Pete Mc... And Alan as well for talking to us and uh, he's got a new album out. We played a track from it just before the news at eight, I Hear Your Voice, and it was really, really good to also meet uh, James Stevens and Oliver Needham, the organisers. Yeah.